Hey everybody, how's it going? Tim Iser here and welcome to Gasparilla County, Florida. This is a brand new city that I'm starting that is going to be heavily inspired by southwestern Florida or the Gulf Coast. I'll be taking a lot of inspiration from cities like Sarasota, Naples, and Fort Myers. Now, I've traveled all over Florida multiple times, and one of my favorite places in Florida is the Gulf Coast, or the region around Sarasota. And the reason is, I just feel like the western shore is a little bit more quiet, a little more chill and relaxed compared to the bustling city of Miami. Now the map that I'm building on is a custom map that I actually built myself using the new map editor tool that I was able to get early access to. Now I'll explain a little bit more on that later in this video, but just know that this map was custom built by me. Now with this being a Florida based map, you can expect a lot of endless suburbs all along the coast with a few towns dotted around the map, but also expect a lot of green space. You don't have to go very far inland in Florida to see that there's also a ton of nature parks in Florida, as well as a lot of cattle and farm pastures. Florida is a huge agriculture center, so I'm going to reflect that as much as I can in this city. But to get things started, I'm going to start working on the town of Gasparilla. So sit back and enjoy, guys. All right, now this is going to be the actual town of Gasparilla and it's going to be loosely based off of Fort Myers in southwestern Florida. I felt like this river looked very similar to where Fort Myers is in real life, so I figured this was the spot for this town. So first I'm going to get started with the road layout, and a little bit later in this episode I will start plopping down all of the essential services for a town, and at the end of this episode I'll start zoning with our brand new beachfront properties. Um, even though there's no beaches here. <laughs> uh, but for this town, I'm going to build it in a very typical Floridian town style. Now, when you think of Florida, for anybody who's never visited, uh, you probably think of the beaches and the Disney parks and Miami or Orlando, all those big urban centers. Well, in this series, I'm going to try to implement a lot of maybe the lesser known aspects of Florida that, you know, somebody who's never been before may not think about. Um, so by the way, if any of you are watching who live in Florida or have spent a lot of time in Florida, let me know if there's anything that I should include in this series or any ideas that you may have. Um, so this, for example, what you're seeing me build right now is very typical of Florida. It's these huge avenues that cut right through these, uh, these swaths of endless suburbs. Now they're not highways. They are kind of like a kind of like a strode, right? They're a divided road uh, with you know speed limits of 45 to 55 miles an hour. and they actually have homes and businesses on either side of them. I think they're kind of dangerous <laughs> to be honest. I, I don't really have a good time navigating these uh, major roads but you know it, it is very typical of florida i guess they work well at moving a high volume of traffic to uh to, from point a to point b uh, so there's going to be a lot of those in uh in this series there's going to be a lot of these huge massive roads that cut in and out of small towns so as you're seeing me do right here um i'm building like this massive six lane avenue through what is going to be a very small town. So that is another thing that's very typical of Florida. You'll have like these small towns in the middle of nowhere. Um, the first town that comes to mind, if you want to check it out on Google Maps, is like Arcadia. Um, it's it's a small town in central Florida, seemingly in the middle of nowhere, and it has like two massive six-lane avenues that intersect right in the middle of town. Now, although these towns have very small populations themselves, Florida is a very busy state. You know, there's a lot of people living in somewhat of a small state. I mean, Florida is still pretty big, but there's almost 20 million people living there. Um, so you have a massive amount of people who are maybe traveling from point A to point B who are passing through these towns, which necessitates these massive avenues. So. That's why I have like this huge eight lane and a six lane avenue cutting through 
you know, what looks like a very small city. So that's why I want to include all of those Florida-esque details that you may not think about. You may have already noticed, but I'll mention it anyway. I'm playing this game with everything unlocked, but not unlimited money. And that's because I still want to actually play the game. I still want there to be an element of challenge, especially that DLC is going to start being released. I actually want to play through those DLC. For now, we're just getting beachfront properties. It doesn't really add a new element to the game. It's just new assets. Um, but still, you know, with modding just around the corner and, uh, you know, some, some potential DLCs that are going to be released in the next X amount of months, um, at which point I'll still be working on this series, you know, I still want to play through the game as it's intended. And that's another thing I want to mention too. So the PDX mod store is on the verge of being released. And when it is released, that is probably when I'm going to start to play around with mods in this series. So I'm not going to do anything too drastic. I'm probably just going to subscribe to, I guess, the more essential mods such as Move It and... I'm not really sure to be honest. I haven't really kept up to date on what mods are already available for the game, um, but I'm definitely going to start to play around with some very basic modding in this series. So um, that is uh, what you can expect over the next few months. Now, in a sense, I don't want to mod the game too heavily. I don't want to put myself in the same situation I was in City Skylines 1, where my performance just takes a huge hit and my cities become, you know, unplayable uh, due to there being just so many mods, uh, a lot of graphical mods, things like that. So I'm going to be pretty modest with the mods. I may just subscribe to a small number of like high quality assets. Um, but the main mods that I really want to look out for right now are uh, mods that give access to all of the base games, props and textures and things like that. Um, because I just know that there's going to be certain situations where I'll find that I want to use like beach props for example or you know things like that I don't know if there's even any beach props in the game by default but uh, you get the point now for this particular town Gasparilla I really want to get that Fort Myers look however it's gonna be difficult because I have zero art deco buildings uh, there's there's virtually no buildings in the default game that resemble a lot of like Floridian style buildings apart from the beachfront properties but I mean that only contains houses and not businesses so I'm gonna be forced to use some of these New York slash you know Boston themed buildings that come in the base game um, but I'm, I'm just gonna make like a quaint little downtown just like there is in Fort Myers it's a very nice very walkable urban core uh, so I'm going to emulate that a little bit in this town but the town is quickly going to dissolve into endless suburbs, as does a lot of Floridian towns as well. But then there'll be tons and tons of beachfront properties. All right, so now that I placed down all of the roads critical to downtown Gasparilla, I now need to connect the actual town to this main highway. Uh, so this is I-75, and it is the main arterial highway running from north to south on this map. So it's going to carry a ton of traffic throughout the region. And I need to connect the town of Gasparilla to it. And uh, oh, by the way, guys, I finally learned how to use the slope tool. I received a ton of flack on some of my recent videos because I wasn't using the tool properly. Uh, but I took the time to finally learn how it works. And I kind of like it now. I still think it's kind of janky in some situations. I think the slope tool or the smooth tool rather works better in some situations, but you know, I, I kind of like the slope tool now. Um, so anyways, so I'm going to make this uh, interchange here between this uh, road and I-75, but it's going to be a rather unique interchange. And I haven't seen any of these particular interchanges built in any city builder yet. So this is going to be maybe a first. Um, so what I'm doing is I will be connecting one of these divided strodes up to the main highway. And this is going to make for a very unique park low interchange. So I'm going to be building a park low, but because I'm intersecting it with like a divided four lane road, it's going to be a little different than your traditional park low. 
So um, I'll let you guys enjoy in time-lapse mode the uh, construction of this interchange. And once I'm done this interchange, I'll get into some live play and we'll get started on the actual town, laying down some essential services, schools, hospitals, all of that stuff. So enjoy, guys. Now, I want to talk about this map that I'm building on. I told you guys earlier in this episode that I would explain all about it. So here we go. I was lucky enough to get early access to the City Skylines 2 map editor. And I can say right off the bat that it is amazing. It's so complex and so powerful. I'll, I'll make a tutorial on how to use it at some point. But I can say that there's a huge learning curve to how to use it. I invested you know, multiple hours in just figuring out how to use it. But using this tool, you're actually able to import height maps into the game. So you're actually able to do this in City Skylines 1, but I find it's actually easier to do in City Skylines 2. It's just a, a bit more intuitive, but with that, it's a little bit more complicated. So I'll make a tutorial on how to do that as well. Uh, but the gist of it is that there's various websites out there that allow you to export um, PNGs or images of anywhere in the world. So uh, you can create these grayscale height maps, which you can import into City Skylines, and boom, there's your map. So um, initially, I had exported a map of somewhere in Florida. I think it was near Jacksonville or something like that. But I began thinking, you know, Florida is a pretty populous spot, and it wouldn't take long until somebody probably went out into the comments saying, hey, I know exactly where this is. So I didn't want to actually play on a Florida map, right? Because it would influence me in certain ways. And, and I just wanted to create something unique, right? So I actually imported a map of a national park in my area um, that luckily enough is very Florida-esque. It's a it's very low. It's It's a very flat national park. There's beaches. There's sand dunes, there's bogs, swamps, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's perfect Florida conditions, except, I mean, it's Canada. <laughs> so I had to do a little bit of modifications on the map. Um, I played a lot with the underwater portion of the map because unfortunately height maps don't really account for anything that goes on under the water. So anything that's below sea level is not accounted for. So when you're importing a map, basically as soon as you hit sea level, um, the, the game just kind of drops the terrain level to zero, to rock bottom, basically. Um, so basically what I had to do is to manually create all of these sand dunes. I had to create all of like these, these um, different depths under the water. And what's really cool is, is this took a lot of work, but on this map, if you zoom out, you can actually see like all of the channels that run through the rivers and all of these sandbars that can only be seen from up high. If you're looking at them from like a, a first person point of view, it just looks like water. And you know, that's something that's, you know, realistic. Um, it's, it's the exact same thing. Like if you go flying in a plane, you'll see things in the water that you'd never be able to see if you were just actually standing on the beach. But yeah, I did put a number of hours into this map. Once the Paradox store is fully operational and, and you know anybody can start uploading stuff to it, I will be sharing this map. And a lot of you guys have actually been asking me for my uh, Bixton save as well. So I'll probably upload that on uh, the Paradox workshop at some point too. But um, anyway, just that's all to say, if you're interested in downloading this map, You'll just have to be a little patient for the next, you know, couple of days, weeks, whatever, when I'm able to uh, upload the map to uh, to the workshop. But all that to say, guys, the new map editor is amazing. It's very powerful. Just be patient with it. Learn how to use it. You know, I'm sure there's going to be tons of tutorials on YouTube. Uh, like I said, I'm going to make my own tutorial, but, you know, by the time I do, there's probably going to be like 10 tutorials already uploaded. So... You know, just learn how to use it, and you'll see that it is super, super powerful. Um, just to give you guys an example, you can totally change every aspect of your map. You can change the climate. You can change how 
likely it is to rain or snow on your map you can even set where your map is located on earth so what latitude slash longitude uh therefore affecting the climate um you know every single thing like just think of any area on earth you can simulate it in this the with the new map editor so it's pretty cool it's pretty powerful i had a ton of fun with it making this map and uh you're gonna see more of this map as i expand and and build onto it And this is the final result of the park low interchange. It seems to run pretty good so far. Uh, so the four lane road that cuts under the highway goes to the edge of the map. So there is vehicles that spawn there and they are, you know, using all the exits and stuff. So it seems to be working all right so far. We'll see how it holds up once traffic volumes increase. All right, guys, all my roads are laid out, all the connections are made, and I'm ready to go, ready to start placing down some essential services. Got a bit of a fire going on here, but let's just hope that it doesn't creep its way into town, and uh, let's just hope that it blazes itself out. So I'm going to start by placing some essential services, starting with a medical clinic. So let's figure out where we want this building to be. Uh, oh, it looks like it would actually fit pretty much perfectly right here uh, next up let's do education for now I'm just gonna plop down an elementary school we'll get into a high school a little later on now of course this building is a little bit bigger let's see if we can plop it uh, where should I put this building I might put it on the outskirts of town a bit more like maybe over here I'll extend I'll extend this street for now and I will place down my elementary school right here may as well plop all of the available upgrades to it because I know for sure I am going to need them all there we go uh, let's do an extension wing as well there we go and I'm just curious now, will this fit? Oh, okay, it fits almost perfectly. There. Perfect. Uh, okay, so we need water and power. I almost forgot. I think for power, I'm just going to import from the outside of the map. Uh, but before I do that, I want to take care of water. And the reason why is... I've been facing a little bit of a dilemma. I think I know which side I'm going to take, but just to, uh, to to give you guys the story. So by default, when you're playing City Skylines with nothing unlocked, the only thing you have available to get started is a sewage outlet. Now, I don't necessarily want to just dump water into uh, the river here. I mean, that's pretty terrible. And plus, Florida seems to be like the kind of place that is very environmentally conscious you know there's a lot of green spaces there's tons of parks it just seems like a very clean place um so i really want to do the wastewater treatment plant but this building is not really meant to be plopped like day one when you're starting the game because it's obviously very expensive i do have over 60 million in the bank though so i should be able to survive for quite a while so i'm kind of betting on the uh, government subsidies to bail me out in this case so I'm gonna get started with water services I'm going to run a street off in this direction and this will be the location for my water treatment plant right over here and yeah, this is going to run me 120k a month. I really want to do this upgrade as well. The extra processing unit. It's like these big aeration fields. Just looks pretty cool. How much is this? An extra 40,000. So we're looking at 
180, 160,000 a month to run this. I reckon I can survive a good while. Uh, oh, are my pipes connected? Yes, they are. And what does this icon? Water facility overload. Cannot pump enough water to match current demand. Oh, okay. Well, that is because I need to provide water to the city and not just... Because I think this recycles a portion of the water back into the city. Yeah, water output. So it's just a little bit, not even enough to, uh, to service <laughs> what I have here. Um, but that's fine. So what I want to do next is um, make this into like a little industrial zone. So I'm going to put a transformer station right here. And I am going to hook this up to uh, the edge of the map. So I think I'm just going to run this straight through. There, right to the edge of the map. So for now, I am just going to import electricity from elsewhere. Now let's put a water tower somewhere in town. I don't really know where. I think maybe, maybe over here. I have some open space. So what I'll do is just run a little street in behind just like this and I'll have my water tower right over here. All right, so I got a school, got a hospital. Let's move on to a firehouse. Now, the firehouse I really like because it looks very historic. I've mentioned this before and I want Gasparilla to have a nice historic downtown. So I think I'm just gonna plop this uh, this fire station right here, smack dab in the middle of town and it'll kind of be part of this historic downtown. Police station as well. It, this looks very, you know, historic, classic American police station. And, oh, this actually fits right over here. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm thinking I'm going to plop it right here. All right. So I got medical, education, fire, police. Uh, what next? Probably a couple of parks. I mean, of course, I need like some postal services, all that kind of stuff, but I'm going to wait for that. As long as the essentials are down, I should be all set to get going. Uh, but I'm going to plop down maybe a small park or two. So let's do, uh, let's see here. Let's do a small park in front of the police or the fire station rather. And then I'll do a dog park over in this part of town, over here. Uh, maybe small playground over here. There, and that leaves the entire city covered. Now, as far as death care, this is still a pretty cheap building. I guess I could just plop down a cemetery Oh, I think this actually fits perfectly right over here. I'll just preemptively plop down a cemetery over here. And there we are. Okay. So all my essential services are down. Good enough to get me started and let's get to zoning so of course i have my low density waterfront housing in both american and european theme now playing around with this um, as soon as i got access to it i can tell you that both these style of buildings would work wonderfully in any kind of city that you're doing they they look really nice honestly uh so the majority of the low density housing that's going to be in this city will be these beachfront housing regardless if they're near a beach or not. Um, so I want to get started on downtown. And uh, for downtown, I'm going to make it kind of like a nice little walkable area, just like in Fort Myers. So to do this, 
I'm going to build a mixture of mixed housing. Now, I'm going to have to wait a little bit just because my demand isn't really high for anything right now except residential. There's not going to be very much high density demand at all in this entire map, you know. Western, southwestern Florida doesn't have very many super tall buildings. Um, okay, well, it looks like I'm going to have to start a little bit more on the outskirts of town so I can at least get some of this... Uh, residential demand in check I'll be sure to plop down some commercial buildings as well I'll plop some stores here along US 41 all right well while I'm waiting for these buildings to grow and for my demand to increase I'm gonna work on this little park here why do I have houses here there so for this park, I'm not going to do anything too crazy, uh, but let's build some paths through here. Actually, what I think I'll do... So I think this is going to be very slow going, guys. Um, as the city grows, I'm pretty much going to be using up all of the available demand. So, you know, I'll just have to plop a little bit of a residential zone and move on to something else. But uh, there's plenty to be done in the meantime while I'm waiting for these buildings to be built. And uh, here is our first look at some of these residential buildings. As you can see, they look a lot better than the default residential houses uh, the, the American themed ones anyways um, some of them have pools some of them don't which I really like so it creates a little bit of uniformity uh, between uh, some of these houses I think I might redo this this little zone here though we have some houses that are facing one way and some are facing the other way I'd like it to be yeah there we go hopefully this works yep perfect Uh, but yeah, I mean overall these uh, these new assets look really nice. I'm, I'm satisfied All right, so we got some medium density buildings already built up here They are a little bit taller than what I would like You know, that's one thing that's kind of missing from uh, from city skylines too so far is uh, you know some appropriately sized <laughs> buildings medium density buildings that is so I'm just going to have to be very careful with what kinds of buildings I plop. And I'm not really left with a lot to detail with in behind these buildings and such. Maybe I can like put a parking lot in this case. Actually, yeah. There. Plenty of parking spaces, right? This is an American city after all. This city is going to be very car dependent, guys, so I'm not really going to make a big effort to include any public transportation, let's just say. Um, I don't want to destroy the whole block. I think I'll leave it. But I think I should have a parking lot. I'll have a parking lot here, in behind. Just like that, yeah. There, so along with uh, these mixed zonages, I should probably have some... Let's have some row houses as well. Is there not anything building in here? Can I squeeze in a row house? Looks like I can. 
Will it work? Oh yeah, nice. Looks like it's gonna work. But then over here, I'm not too fond of this building to be honest, so I will remove it. And okay, great. In its place will be two smaller buildings. Same thing over here, you know. I think I'm just going to squeeze in a row house. Or in this case, maybe two. There. And that's going to help make downtown look a bit more appropriately sized. How's this fire doing anyway? Oh, okay, so this fire is completely out. It appears that I have another fire somewhere on the map. Not really sure where. It's probably just starting, but uh, as long as it's far away, I'm not really concerned. And uh, look at over here, guys. So I got some bigger lots here that I've finally sprouted up. And as you can see, they look really nice, you know? These guys have some nice backyards. These homes look quite Florida-esque. I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, with the way these buildings look. I'm going to get into some more European-style housing a bit later on. They are a, a bit, not necessarily bigger, but they look a bit richer, if you will. So um, they might be more appropriate for, you know, another, another location around town. And let's maybe do... Some medium density apartments just like this we'll see how that goes there and I really like to take my time here with downtowns guys so bear with me on that but uh, you know I, I, I really want these downtowns to look nice Over here I might I might build a little park or something so let's build a nice big old parking lot plenty of room for all of the vehicles and then uh, what I'll do is in behind here I will make room for some tennis courts Oh shoot, I thought it was gonna fit here. Can I move this over by one? Yes, I can. And I think I can extend this, yep. There, and let's make some room for basketball courts as well as a state uh, skate park. Actually, I'm gonna move it over by one. And then that will give me a bit of room here for some trails. So we can maybe have some trails here that go uh, throughout the town. There. And here's a little sneak peek, guys, at the palm trees. So uh, I don't know which one this is. This is a royal palm tree. Um, you can see this is a coconut palm tree, another coconut, I guess these are all coconut palm trees, but anyways, there's, there's four different kinds of palm trees in the game, um, so, you know, that's, that's pretty exciting, I really like the way they look, they're pretty cool. Alright, so I got a ton of things going on right now, and it looks like demand is slowly increasing, so... One of the other reasons why I built this little road here uh, in this location was this is going to be a mini industrial zone. And it's going to have to remain mini because the wind is blowing directly into town here. So I'll have to be very mindful of uh, where pollution goes. 
So I'm just going to plop down a small number of industrial buildings. Hopefully these are just going to be little warehouses and things. But I'm also noticing now that I have some office demand that is ever increasing. Um, although it looks like I'm not going to be able to, uh, <laughs> to build it in this location, unfortunately. Um, but that's okay. I can probably find a location here near downtown that would be suitable for offices. Maybe uh, just a couple of small offices here and there. There, I don't want to go too crazy. But yeah, I'll just plop down a couple of offices. And these will all be stores. There. Alright guys, well, I let the simulation run for quite some time. Um, I put down a, uh, a helicopter, a fire helicopter depot over here because I was just dealing with so many fires. Like, at one point, this whole map was on fire. See, there's another fire over here. I think it's just because of the tree density. So I'm going to have to do something about that at some point. I'm also dealing with uh, another issue. My rivers are all drying up on the map for some reason. The water seems to be slowly seeping away. Uh, so I'll be sure to download a mod to fix that pretty soon. Um, because these, like, all these used to be sandbars underwater. And, you know, they're slowly being uncovered and becoming islands, which I don't necessarily want. So I'm going to have to fix that. But anyways, let's get into what pertains the city. So this is what it looks like in its current state. So I think I've pretty much completed downtown. I don't want it to be any bigger than this because... Uh, Gasparilla's only supposed to be like a small city. Um, so I don't want any like huge skyscrapers or anything in this area. But let's zoom in here and let's take a look at these, uh, these homes. These Floridian beachfront properties, uh, from the new content creator pack. And, uh, you know, they look pretty good. I really like the way that some of these look. Um, they look a lot more Floridian than the basic you know, houses that are included with uh, with the base game. So, um, yeah. So, this is this neighborhood in its current state. What I've done here, too, is I've left some empty spaces. And uh, I've noticed a lot in a lot of Floridian towns. I don't know if a lot of towns have fallen on hard times and a lot of houses have become abandoned, just like a lot of other American towns. It looks like uh, we've just had a house collapse over here. Um... But yeah, I just wanted to have an element of that in this town as well. You can see here that there's some empty lots. Most of, most of these empty lots are just due to these lots being in weird shapes and I couldn't get the zones to, uh, to fit just right. But I think it looks cool, you know. A lot of American cities have struggling urban cores, you know. A lot of abandoned houses around the, uh, the downtown core. So we can just chalk it up to that in uh in gasparilla as well so uh looking on over here guys i told you i'd show you some european homes so every house here that lines the edge of the water these are all european beachfront homes so uh, as you can see they they look a bit more european than the american ones but they fit just nicely in any kind of american city as well i find that they look a, a little bit more posh you know, for an American city. So this is why I'm probably going to mostly play around with these assets in, um, you know, more wealthy areas. So yeah, guys, that is just about as far as I'm going to make it in this episode. By next episode, I'd really like to start expanding probably in this area here. I'd like to build some neighborhoods that have all like these little canals in and around them. That uh, will be pretty cool, but who knows? Whatever I feel like doing, that's what I'll get into. But I feel like we're off to a great start here in Gasparilla County. So I really hope that you're um, enjoying this series so far, guys. I hope you're excited to, uh, to see it come to fruition. And I can't wait to see how the city expands from here. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks so much. 
And uh, again, leave me some suggestions down in the comments if there's anything you'd like to see me build or, you know, any, uh, any Florida-esque tips that you can provide me. All is welcome down in the comments. So again, thanks guys for watching. Thanks for sticking around. Really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this specific episode, be sure to give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And of course, be sure to subscribe to the channel to get notified of future uploads. Until the next episode, guys, take care.